So I have uh, one card here is 2080 Ti. I show it to you yesterday on a post. This card comes from a customer. Of course, in this card, the story is that the customer bought a computer two years ago, I think. And uh, so com completely new. The whole computer was built from a very big uh, company in Germany. And the computer was shipped with the card installed on the motherboard and this is a very big mistake i think after that the customer started the computer and after 10 minutes he has a black screen and uh, he sent the card back to the seller for a warranty and the card was there about two months they did nothing they ship it back to the customer in this condition and uh, the card is still not working so this card is sitting one the, more than one year and uh, now the customer ship it to me let's take a look uh, i will show you let's first start with the measurements let's take a, a resistance measurements so let's start with the resistance uh, go for the e external voltages 12 lines 12 volts from the pci from the power supply they are not shorted we are good go to the core it's looking also fine the memory i have measured already everything yesterday but to show you that everything uh, is looking good the pci is at 12 volts and the 3.3 volts also kilohms here are the pex rail and the uh, 1.8 volt is down there so this actually is the PIX and this should be the 1.8 volt rail. It's kind of low. Alright, so let's continue. I will switch over to the microscope to show you exactly what I have noticed. So here are the RAM chips closer to the PCI SWOT. Right here is the PCI SWOT. And as you know uh, from my previous videos, these 2080 Ti's, they have a big problem with these chips, these closer chips to the PCI SWOT. Also, uh, the, the, the production code of these chips is old. So we have to replace them all, maybe, we'll see. But what I have noticed, so I I haven't done any work here. This is the same condition uh, what the card arrived right here. And you can see these components right here on the bottom side are not perfectly aligned. And also some of these components are very shiny. This maybe is uh, leaded solder there. Somebody worked with leaded solder here. This side of the capacitor is with leaded solder and also this capacitor on this side is leaded solder. This capacitor is, is not perfectly on the place. But the, the, fun, the funny part comes right now. Let me show you under the chip. I will try to keep, uh, to keep the card stable so you can see. So can you see on the left side, there is missing one solder ball. And also if I continue to the other side, we can see that the solder ball on the, in the middle is, is perfect. But the left one and the right one, so the left one is completely missing. The right one is, uh, is, <laughs> is not original anymore it's a little bit sm smaller right now here's the next chip you can see how the the solder balls normally looks like it's like this and again here we have this solder balls so what's happened here i think that i don't know who who made that but this chip was basically disoldered removed and uh, can also be that the person who disoldered this chip, he also ripped pads under the chip. And after that, he soldered back the chip on the board. But 
without reboiling it, just like that. So from here, let's remove this one. Also, I will I, I like to remove O3 chips. So the O3 chips closer to the PCI slot, and we will see what we can find under this one. I like to use flux when this soldering components. On this one. So let's start the removing process. This one is good. Now we are ready. So right here, we have all three RAM chips. As you can see here, I think this is the, exactly, this is the chip uh this is the same chip what we looked on the side so you can see this this solder ball here is completely missing these two solder balls are completely missing this pad right here is ripped and on this side also this is a big mess right here so uh can you tell the difference this is the second ram chip and my flux is completely fresh so it's perfectly melted right here and right here there is some residue from the old flux which is completely hard this one so this part is, is also missing right here on the bottom all right enough talking let's let's clean these ram chips i will start with this one first just the picture for you so you can see better applying some flux to all of them maybe we can save these two ram chips because they are not touched so let's start cleaning oh there are more pads ripped on this one Hopefully on the board is everything in good condition because this will be, be a big mess there if the pads are ripped. And all this job is done by a, a warranty service. Unbelievable. So let's clean the last one also. I will not use this one, but uh, just to see how it looks. So using some alcohol to clean. All right, now we can see better. Let's zoom in. So this chip is looking good, all pads are there, the cover is good, we can use this one. What about here? This one is also still looking good, we can use this one, I missed one, one ball right here. Let me clean it fast. So, now comes the third one. And let's zoom in more to see what damage we have here. Here are the ripped pads. This one, this one. and almost everything is looking good only these two pads so let's leave it on the side 
these two chips also on the side they're still good and here is the board so let me switch you again to the microscope and see what kind of disaster we have here and yes i can see two parts ripped this is not looking so great so uh this first chip everything looks good the second one also good and the third one let me zoom in more so we can see here the balls are missing there there was no balls no at all this part is also ripped and i don't know if you can see this but this trace right here is scratched right here this is not done by the factory for sure and we have two more uh i don't know missing pads or maybe corroded pads hmm, we'll see let's start cleaning and we will find out blank of flux Now this is the situation and these ripped pads we need them you can see this pad is connecting through a via right here and this pad also is connected to a via right here so we need those two let's start to scrape up this area This is enough. Let's go to the next one. So this is something to work with. Let's thin these pads. I don't like this tip, I will take a smaller one. Now looks good. 
Let's solder wire there. I will hold it down with a tweezer. And solder it. So this looks good. Let's use a little bit of alcohol to clean and cut the rest. Try to clean it a little bit more. So you can see also the connection here. The connection is good. Maybe I have to cut this side like that so it doesn't touch the other part next to it and so far looking good let's go to the next one again i will hold it down just like that easy again let's cut the rest we don't need it and try to clean very carefully because these pads are not fixed right now. Let's inspect what we have done. This one looking good and also this one is looking good. Let's apply a little bit of uh, solder mask to cover, dry and we can solder the chips. Uh, masking paste, paste on my uh, knife and applying it with the tweezers. This one is enough here. Let's apply it to this one a little bit. Alright, I will leave this on the side with a UV lamp to dry completely. And we can start reboiling these two round chips. I say that this one is completely damaged with the rip pad, so we'll not use it. It's going on trash, and we'll reboot this too. I will not apply more flux, I'm just using the brush. The brush has flux from the last chip. Now it's good. And the bone, the same hole, maybe some dirt there. All right, enough. Okay, let's leave that on the side and I will place the two chips in the in, in the reform machine. They will need maybe 10 minutes. Let's see if this is hard. Yes, this one is. This one also is hard. This looks good. And also this looks also good. Now I have to remove, I have to clean these pads. One more time, so this one right here and these two on the bottom side are not so perfect. Yes, do we, do we have more? This one is good. And this chip is also good, so only here. Only here, a couple of pads. Let's do that right now. Applying a very small amount of flux. I don't need much. Be very, very careful here.
this is not my favorite wick what I'm using right now, but uh, it's smaller than the other. So I'm using this one. Nice. I want to, to thin this uh, two pads, what, which we soldered it. A bit of flux here and also here. I'm using the 0 0.1 millimeter soldering tip from the JVC. It's really good soldering station for this job. That's good. And the next one. Also perfect. This is how it looks like after the repair of these two traces. Very simple repair, nothing special. Um, this trace is looking good and this one is also looking good. So I'm not a big fan of these Chinese pets, but we will try it. Maybe they're good. Maybe. Let's leave the board on the side and check the round chips. Here reboot. Here's the first one. looking nice and clear also the color is good it's not burned it's still green and the second one also all the balls on, on the place and I want to take one more chip these are the 2018 RAM chips but the story is that the, the cart is completely new. The cart worked only five minutes. So basically these chips are completely new. I will try to save the customer some money. I will use the same chips. And maybe the cart will make this, the, the, the micron problem. Maybe we will come after months or year. Who knows? So if this cart is working after this... Uh, repair what I'm doing right now I will leave the card like like that if the memory is working and there are no errors I will leave the card because uh, this card is new otherwise the customer have to pay all 11 micron chips and this is uh, not so cheap and I'm also placing the the new RAM chip so with 2000 this is from 2021 RAM chip. I'm placing it on the on the first place right here, where the rib pads was were. I don't want to think about about this one. This can also be ripped, but uh, one by one. So I will turn the the workstation and we can solder it. Let's touch this one also. Alright, the cart is here. And now I want to measure the resistance on the memory rail. And we have good reading. This is a very good sign. 30 plus ohms. The cart right now it's... I uh, think about 40 degrees maybe? It's warm, it's not hot. So let's use the microscope and see the, the connections right here, the solder balls right here. And I will also try to see this corner here. There is not much space, this, this area is crowded, but I want to try to see it. Switching to the microscope and let's do that. I will try to adjust the picture for you. So now all solder balls are there on the place. Here comes the next one and so on. And the last one, the focus is not so good. And let's try to see the corner on the top side where this uh, this pad was. Let's try to focus there. Mm. 
I'm trying to give you a picture. And here you have it. This is the third pin. The, the connection is still there. The connection is still there. Very good. We can we can test the card right now. Let's uh, place my fancy cooler on the top. Poke the card with the riser. And see you have a, if you have a picture. I want to just... So we have measured the, the resistance measurement of the memory rail. Let's measure the 1.8 volts also. We have 390, which is good, and the PEX rail is uh, 4.5. All right, we can power on. Let's do that with the riser. Hopefully, this card will work. Hopefully, because it's completely new card, completely new. And the seller does not uh, does not repair it un under warranty. This is very bad. And on top of that, they did a big damage under so under these chips here. I have no words for this company. Here comes the fancy cooler. The 3090 Founders Edition fan. I don't want to stress test the card in, in this condition, no. I just want to see a picture without artifacts, uh, that the drivers are loaded and everything looks good. After that, I will assemble the card and, of course, uh, stress test it. But right now, I don't need that. All right. A HDMI cable is connected to the card. Uh, let's turn on the fan. Fan is spinning and powering the cart on. The power consumption from the two 8 pins right now is about 10, 10 watts and we don't have picture. I checked the cart one more time today and I find out that I have I managed to rip one component from the back side of the board with the rework station. This component is a resistor from the PEX rail air 1027 and that's why we don't have picture because the card was not recognized now now i installed this 10 kilo ohm resistor and now the card is working perfectly fine i will leave this card for a couple more hours to see but now it's running uh, from maybe 30 minutes and everything seems to be good as always thank you for watching if you need a repair you can check the link in the video description down below and we will see us in the next one have a great day